Uh, obviously, uh, here to talk a little bit about CXF and where we're going, where, where we've been. Um, so uh, obviously, the, the first part, we'll have a few relatively introductory slides here at the beginning. Uh, so if people are trickling and during them, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Uh, but so uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I work at Talend. Uh, I've been there for three years. And I have a whole bunch of, a couple of basically a team of engineers that are devoted to the various patchy projects. I mean, you, if you're on Camel or ActiveMQ or CXF or any of the web services related things, I mean, you, you'll see a bunch, or CRAF or some of like the OSGI things too. They're, they're there. Um, I, our, my team is actually pretty much de entirely devoted to working on the Apache projects. Uh, we do a little bit of stuff for the, the product teams, uh, but the, the goal of my team really is to uh, work in the Apache communities, foster the communities, and, and kind of uh, build those up to a state where Talon can build products on it. Because um, uh, as a lot of you guys may know, I'm trying to build products on like open source with a dead community isn't quite as effective as trying to, to build one on, on a thriving community where you have a lot of input and a lot of people are participating and stuff. Um, I've been with CXF since the beginning, for so that's like 2006 time frame type thing. And uh, I'm really heavily involved with, with Apache and all kinds of projects. And I keep getting, that list keeps getting longer every time I do a slide. And <laughs> But uh, I am an Apache member. I did serve on the board for a short little period of time as somebody left and stuff. So I, I'm very heavily involved with Apache, and I do encourage people to try and get involved with Apache if, if they can. A um, little bit about CXF. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, uh, I'm probably most of you probably are if you're in here. <laughs> but it, it, like I said, it was way back in, in 2006 is when we entered the incubator. Uh, it was a merger of Celtics and Xpire and stuff, and we, we kind of got through a whole bunch of, of initial merger things. Uh, like you get two teams in a room and, and kind of like beat each other up until you figure out something that, that works. And that's what CXF kind of came out of that. And it's worked really well. Uh, and the, the core architecture that we defined back in 2006 is still kind of there, even though I just gone through some iterations and stuff. And we've added things like JAXRS and things like that over time. Uh, but for the most part, it, what we started back there is still there, still viable and still there. Uh, we started out, the, the goal was to be JaxWiz 2x, like 2.0 at the time, because we're talking 2006. Uh, certified, we had the TCKs and got all that stuff. Over time, as, as SOAP kind of went down and REST started coming up, we, we added the JaxRS front end uh, and got that certified. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. And, uh, the big things here is it's a very active community. We have 33 committers, 21 I consider active. So within the last 12 months, they've committed some change uh, or at least done reviews of, of, of the releases and done votes and things like that. So I, 21 active people, uh, which is a fairly good number. I mean, it, there's, that's represented by, set, it's, not, it's not just talent. I mean, talent only has like six of them. Uh, but so that, that's it's a very broad community of people. Uh, and that's, that's a good thing. I mean, again, we're getting ideas from, from not just like my guys, but also from, from community members and, and we're getting, uh, contributions uh, for, for ideas that it, like talent has no interest in, but other companies may. So they, they, it's it's a very good community to be involved with. Uh, one of the things that we pride ourselves with is our um, release schedule. Uh, in a lot of the Apache communities, you will get like a release once a year or something. We do releases about every eight weeks, uh, mostly patch releases, but we've also done like minor releases with new features and stuff like that. But we do try to make sure we get bug fixes out very quickly. Um, that's a double-edged sword. Uh, I'll be completely honest with you that. Uh, we've had some p companies tell us that the code base is too unstable because we do too many releases. Um, so even though we're getting their bug fixes that they wanted to them very quickly, they're like, but that was too fast. Uh, <laughs> that means it's not stable. So it, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, to me it's a, it's a mark of pride to say, okay, we're getting your, if you have a problem, if you get us a patch within eight weeks, your bug will be fixed. Um, but some, like I said, it's different viewpoints. Um, one of the goals uh, I get also at the very beginning was to have very complete WS star implementation. So uh, whatever, like the, the I want to say popular, but uh, specs, WS star specs that we, we needed, we'll get those things implemented. Obviously, 
there's a lot of WS star specs uh, that just never caught on. Uh, and if there wasn't somebody in our community that wanted to pursue that, we didn't pursue it. I mean, some of them, <laughs> some of them we had to for the various specs, like JaxWiz requires WS addressing and things like that. But that there, we try to be a, a, as complete of implementation as possible for all these. Uh, over time, we've expanded uh, the, the repertoire of frameworks in CXF to include the, the DOSGI, uh, which is the remote services distributed OSGI capability. So the reference implementation for that is CXF. Uh, we have another sub-project called FedEx, which uh, I'll talk a little bit about later. Um, and I said, CXF, because, partially because of the healthy community, uh, a lot of companies rely on it. Uh, and you'll see it embedded in product, products all over the place. You see it, uh, if people are, like if you kind of Google that string, you'll see a whole bunch of list of, of people. Uh, that are using it for, for various, like Google, uh, I think the Google Analytics uses CXF, and, and so there, there's a lot of, it, it's just used all over, and a lot of it's just, like I said, it's a reflection on the community of, of being able to provide a, a good service stack. So, uh, back in 2010, uh, I had a conversation with my previous employer uh, about whether, I, like, CXF was done. Um, it was like, okay, SOAP is kind of waning, REST is kind of going, like getting up type thing. So at that point, it was just concentrating more on the SOAP stuff. It's like, is CXF done? Uh, so I had to argue quite a bit saying it wasn't done. There was still a lot of stuff that we can do. And, and here we are uh, three and a half years later, and I'm presenting all kinds of new stuff to you guys. So it kind of proves that, that it, at some one way or another, I, I was right. Um, we had a whole bunch of development ef efforts, and we're going to talk a little bit about what has happened in the last couple of years uh, and where we're going with this. So uh, one of the things that we prided ourselves about at the beginning was, was kind of the deployment models. CXF was designed to be very embeddable into various things. So uh, we had our standalone app application. Right at the beginning, we were talking about Spring. We used Spring for everything, and stuff, uh, for configuration and stuff. Uh, but it was also good for war based app unless WAR-based applications as well. Like I said, it was very simple to use, uh, unless you're using uh, WebSphere because of jar conflicts, but that's a WebSphere thing. I, I'm not a fan. Um, but uh, over time, uh, we've improved that. We've expanded into OSGI, uh, and we're going to be, for 3.0, we've gone even a little bit further for that. Uh, we originally started off with a single big bundle. Uh, this is a Dan Deephouse legacy thing, as he insisted that Users didn't want 50 jars on their class path, and he wanted to have one big gigantic jar. Um, so we created that. So when he added OSGI support, we added, we created that, turned that into an actual OSGI bundle. Um, but then starting in 2.6, we decided that was just the wrong way to go because um, it was too monolithic. There was just too much stuff going on. We, we split it up. Uh, the good news is for 3.0, that big bundle is actually gone. It's, it's history. We're, I'm very happy to say that. I, I <laughs> it's been a, a source of problems for a long time in the OSGI world. So for, for 3.0, we actually were able to get it, and we actually have all the little little bundles. Uh, we've been working with various things like blue, Blueprint and uh, the, the JMX management in OSGI is much better. And I mean, when you start going into the, the, the 2.7 releases and the 3.0 releases, things got significantly better for JMX um, in OSGI, as well as using the uh, config admin services to configure various things in CXF, such as uh, your conduit settings, like your certificates for doing HTTPS to a, cert to a server or something. You can do a lot of that stuff without having to like, drop down into either Blueprint or worse, Spring uh, to configure that stuff. You can actually use some of your OSGI capabilities for that. And uh, that's what, again, these are things that are ongoing. We, we started this process of, in, you know, of making these things better for 2.6. It got even better in 2.7. In 3.0, it's going to be even a little, it's just a little bit step better as far as even providing more functionality that you need. Uh, to configure using config admin and, and making it work cleaner. Uh, the big things for 3.0 uh, in the deployment space. Uh, we did a lot of refactoring of the CXF API and CXF RT core bundles. Uh, kind of, we first started by combining them together, which then allowed us to start pulling, th yanking things back out. Uh, so. The, the big thing there is that if you're only doing REST-based applications, JAXRS applications, uh, you don't need a bunch of the WSDL or SOAP-specific technologies that we need, you needed to have previously. Uh, so the, the big things there is like WSDL4J uh, and Neethi. Uh, we kept having this thing, it's like, I'm doing REST applications. Why do I need a WSDL jar? Uh, and 
we're like, well, that's because the CXF API, which is our lowest layer, kind of had dependencies on that. So we, we did a lot of work on, on refactoring a lot, of, a lot of those APIs that required WSDL. Uh, we actually created a new specific CXF RT WSDL module, which is the, the layer of the, the old part of the old core that actually required the WSDL stuff, but it's separated out and only the SOAP based stuff depends on it. Um, because it's a 3.0, we were also able to yank all the deprecated stuff. I mean, after eight years of development, uh, I, as any of you have doing, doing development in your companies know, after eight years, you probably have a lot of deprecated methods there or methods that are no longer used or uh, duplicated code that were copied and pasted all over the place just to avoid touching you know, the one little bug over. And that's, so we, we were able to, to spend a significant amount of effort to, to kind of analyze some of the code, remove some of the deprecated methods, and, and basically make uh, the the core area of CXF a lot more lightweight. So if you only need to do SOAP stuff, you only need to be bringing the SOAP stuff. If you're only doing JAXRS stuff, you don't have, you can bring in a, a smaller set uh, of dependencies. And uh, a lot of a lot of work went in that space. Uh, works fairly well. There's a couple of gotchas though. Uh, like I said the, the mail jar is one we got rid of, but uh, there are certain people that are using attachments that may need that. But because we no, lo we no longer bring it in transitively, you, if, you, if you're using Maven, you may, when you upgrade, you may have to add that back in if your application requires it. But that's, that's kind of a Maven magic, the way it does transitive dependencies. We, we reduced ours, but that may mean you may have to increase yours. But nothing major. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest areas, uh, this is one of the primary things for, for, uh, that we did for 3.0 was, was in the JAXRS area. Uh, as you know, the, the JAXRS 2.0 spec came out last year as part of the whole J2E upgrade things. Uh, so we, uh, Sergey in particular, um, was sitting right there, <laughs> did a ton of work uh, trying to get the JAXRS implementation up to 2.0 levels. Uh, we started this with 2.7. Uh, 2.7 did implement parts of 2.0, um, but not all of it, partially because the spec wasn't even final at that point. Um, but at least it got a foot in the door as far as, okay, starting the, down the direction of the 2.0 stuff. Uh, 3.0, the goal is to be fully, have the JAXRS 2.0 spec completely implemented. So we've added the additional stuff that we didn't have for 2.7, such as the, the full client API, uh, the suspended requests. Uh, we added a contribution from the community, got us started on the bean validation. Again, this is the community being healthy, uh, brought in somebody that says, okay, this interests me, even though it's an option for a standalone JAXRS application, bean validation is, is considered optional. Uh, a community member said, this is important to me, I'll contribute this. And, and he kind of came in with this initial set of patches and stuff and, and helped out. And he's now a committer and is, again, we expand our community, that's a good thing. A <laughs> uh, little bit of things to say about that. Uh, actually, this is more, of a, I'll touch on this in a second. Uh, the the JAX R2S, the, DexRS 2.0 spec, I mean, we're implementing it as possible, close as possible. The problem is Apache doesn't have access to the TCK anymore, um, so we can't certify it. So I'm not going to, I can't stand up here and say CXF 3.0 is going to be JAXRS 2.0 certified. It's not, because we don't have the TCK for it. Uh, the goal is that if we ever do get the TCK, uh, we are at however confident, like as confident as possible as we can be that we would pass the TCK if we had it. Uh, there are still talks about that going on with Oracle and Oracle being Oracle and just being Oracle. Um, <laughs> but that, so that, that is a goal. Um, but hopefully we'll get there. Uh, along with what we've done just for the pure JAXRS 2.0 spec, uh, we actually do a lot more uh, on the REST space as far as providing uh, OAuth 1, OAuth 2, SAML, uh, Kerberos things, so all of your authentication and uh, capabilities. Uh, that's part of our REST uh, runtime or extensions. Uh, we provide some capability for XML signatures and encryptions. Uh, there's a couple of options there around enveloping and detached and uh, things like that. And we provide all kinds of capabilities. If you're there for, for Colm's talk yesterday, he kind of gave a quick example of some of the, uh, what you can do with XML encryption with, with REST and JAXRS. Uh, we also have embraced Waddle. Uh, if you deploy a JAXRS uh, service, we can generate Waddle. Uh, we can generate, if we have a Waddle, we can generate interfaces from that. We actually got a, a Maven plugin now that for the next releases that you can actually generate a Waddle at runtime from your, from your Maven scripts and stuff. So uh, 
it, it's kind of important. Like if you're coming from like the Jax Wiz side, you're so used to having a con WSDL contract. So Waddle is not really WSDL, but it's kind of like WSDL, and it kind of gives you some level of contract uh, that you can kind of give to another team and say, this is what I'm implementing, rather than some Word doc or something like that. That's a kind of a popular way of documenting your, your services. Um, and then we also have some, a lot of other cool little features that, that are part of the rest. Uh, the, the FQL searches and the, the filter query stuff uh, allows you to kind of create REST, more powerful REST services really, relatively easy. If you have a back end that's providing some data, you can create these searches and stuff that are relatively easy. Now, these things are all part of the CXF REST implementation. Again, a lot of these things are kind of contributions from the community or things that the community wanted, uh, but they're not part of like the JAXRS spec. So you're not going to see TCK tests on any of these things, or, but they're, they're kind of cool things that, that we've done as part of CXF. Uh, one of the other things that we, we constantly are working on with uh, CXF uh, is the concept of services. In 2.5, we start, I mean, when CXF first started, it was just a framework for SOAP services. Um, in 2.5, we started introducing kind of out of the box services. Uh, we, we basically started with the, uh, I think it was the STS was kind of the first, uh, and then we've kind of expanded fr from there. Uh, and each, each release, each major release, we're kind of introducing some, some new functionality in this. So, uh, like WS notification came in, in 2.7 that was ported from service mix. Uh, for new for 3.0 is we have a WS eventing service so that you can actually do, do some WS eventing. They're kind of similar, notifications and eventing are kind of similar, but they're different specs. So you can kind of, a lot of use cases for one also apply to the other, but they are different specs and how they work. Um, I talked about the security token service. This is a huge one. Uh, this was a, one of Talon's customers demanded a STS, and they wanted it to be open source and available to the community because they got burned by a previous vendor that sold them an STS and then disappeared. Um, so that's one of, the, one of the reasons why it's in, a, in it was contributed to CXF was they wanted it out into a vibrant community to so they wouldn't get burned like that uh, again. Um, each release, we get a little bit more powerful. We add more features to it, uh, and uh, there's we start, start going down the list. There, the, the, you kind of get more complex as far as what it can handle from the SAML and stuff like that. Uh, so every release, it gets a little bit better. Um, uh, two seven introduced WS Discovery. Uh, this one, uh, again, it's it's kind of uh, one of those things where where you may not even realize it's there. Uh, if you have all the WS Discovery stuff installed, uh, when you start your service, it's going to send out a ping saying, I'm, I'm here. Uh, we have uh, client APIs to say, OK, give me a, on my network, give me a list of everything that implements this interface or whatever. And you can actually kind of go out and, and get your list of things. I mean, these are kind of hidden, feet, hidden things. I'm kind of going, even though this is like a 3.0 talk, these are also stuff that we've been working on over time. Um, and again, enhanced. Uh, for for three O, we've done a lot more testing. We actually had a community member uh, was doing a lot of captures of. Uh, he was working with Onvif compli compliant IP cameras, um, and he was doing a lot of like capturing of the UDB packets uh, to see. Okay, if you send a hello, I'm getting a fault back. back. Why? Uh, so we worked closely with that that community member to to get traces back and forth, so that now we he can actually use the CXF and find all his cameras that are on his network and talk to all his cameras individually and stuff like that, which is, which is kind of cool. And these, these are, it's a standard, so there are devices that implement it. Some of the HTTP printers do. Um, and like I said, scanners and the IP cameras are the huge one because um, that's an actual spec that dictates it. Um, uh, for 3.0, uh, we, we went down the direction, um, uh, Andreas, who's not in here, he had another one of the uh, Talon members, he, they, for another client, we had to implement a new XKMS service for, for key management. Uh, and we, again, the customers kind of wanted it part of the community, let the, let the community ideas flow into their stuff like that. So uh, it was originally designed only for 3.0, but because 3.0 kept kind of slipping a little bit here and there, uh, we decided to spend some time to, to backport it into 2.7. So it actually was new for 2.7.7, but the intent was for 3.0. So it wasn't really a 2.7.0 new feature, which is why I'm bringing it up. Uh, it's, for those of you that, that don't know much about XKMS, it was designed to, to kind of help with your key distribution problems, where uh, if I have a secure service that uses this particular key, uh, and I have to change that key. Do I have to go to all 100 clients and say, here's my new key, um, which kind of can get frustrating. Uh, 
Whereas if you had an XKMS service up and running, you can, sit, uh, you can always have your, your clients point at the XKMS service. That's, that's where they're going to get their key from. And then it's just a matter of uh, updating it in the XKMS service, and then the clients can, can kind of grab it from that using, uh, this is a spec, so there's, it, there's security is in mind and all that stuff as far as how that works. And there are, again, it's not just CXF that, that can interop with this. It's other clients as well. Um, so again, that's another service that we, that's technically new for 3.0, but it is actually available in 2.7 as well. Um, as part of this, we provide, uh, like I said, uh, for the various touch points in CXF where we need to go get a key, uh, we've provided uh, either interceptors or, or providers for, for WSS4J that would actually go off to our XMS service and get the key. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to, to configure some of the clients in CXF because you can just say, okay, my, my XKMS service is over there, go get it. And so uh, as we find other areas where we need to, to provide key touch points, we can obviously enhance this over time as well. Uh, talk a little bit about FedIS. Uh, it's also a new, relatively new uh, sub-project for CXF uh, for implementing, the, I always, this is like a tongue twister to me, the WS Federation Passive Requester Profile. <laughs> just too many little words in there. That, but it uh, basically allows you to do some of the single sign-on uh, type things in a s secure manner. Uh, we provide a very lightweight IDP. It, it's, I, I'm not going to say our IDP is as good as like some of your commercial products out there. It's not. Uh, but for, for things like testing, unit testing, and things like that, it, it works great. If you just need to spin up a quick IDP to, to do some, some basic testing, uh, that function is there. Uh, and we prov with the latest version of FedIS, which was just a few months ago, uh, we've added support for Tomcat and WebSphere and Jetty and along with Spring Security and stuff. So some, if you need to do like the single sign-on IDP-based stuff, it's, it's something to, to, to look into. And I encourage people that if this is interesting to you, just give it a try. Uh, we're always looking for contributions in this space because uh, it is relatively new and, and something to, to just keep on your radar screen. So security, uh, this is a huge one for 3.0, uh, huge, huge. Uh, I'm going to, to embarrass Calm for a minute here. Uh, <laughs> a couple years ago, uh, when I was talking to Calm, he, Calm works for me, he, he's one of my, uh, he reports to me and stuff, so as, as part of his annual review, I kind of asked what his goals were. Uh, and, and this is what he specifically said, it was he wants to make CXFWS security implementation one of the best like the best, not, not one of, it was the best implementation. Uh, so a lot of what he's done the last couple of years has been towards this goal, and he's done an amazing job. So I, uh, like I said, he's sitting over there, and it, he had two talks yesterday. And, um, so uh, again, uh, in CXF, security has been very, is very important. A lot of it's due, due to calm uh, myself. We've done a lot of work on uh, all kinds of testing and stuff. I, I talked about the services that we've done before, uh, but we've also uh, implemented a lot of the other, uh, I want to say the obscure profiles. If you know anything about the WS security specs, there's all these like sub-profiles, like the SAML profile, the username token profile, stuff like that. So we've gone through, uh, we've got most of these things implemented now. So we have like the Spinego and the Kerberos profiles, which are, are kind of unusual to see, especially on the Java side. Uh, We've also done a ton of work to prevent denial of ser service attacks. Uh, one thing that, that was interesting there is there was a company that was doing some, some testing with the various ESBs. And we got this note saying, it's like, we can't get your, your like, actual performance testing. They're like, they got this note back saying, we can't get your ESB to pass our tests. And, and like looking at their tests, it's, it's because they were actually doing a WS security test to see how fast it would be. And they were sending the exact same message over and over again, as fast as they could to see how it would turn around. Well, if it's got a nonce in there, we're gonna, like, we were the only ESB like, out of the box at the time that would start rejecting it because we were actually doing the secure checking of the nonces. Um, and saying, okay, this is a replay attack. Um, so I, one of the things that we, 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 in CXF we've done is, is by default, we're try, we try to be as secure as possible. Uh, we provide flags to turn off the stuff, but it, security isn't an option. It, this is, this is some, for us, security is important. Uh, we'll sac sacrifice a little bit uh, of performance if we have to to make sure things are secure. Um, uh, we are constantly, I mean, Calm and I, we, we work, there's a couple of researchers that do a lot of XML-based security attack vector things, and we keep getting pings from them once a year, twice a year, saying, hey, this doesn't look right. And, and so we, 
for better or for worse, we've had to is, uh, issue a bunch of CVE uh, like notices about things. But the, and the good thing is we've responded. Everything that was reported, respond to as quickly as possible. We we try to get things working, and uh, a lot of this it ends up being good stuff um, as far as being able to fix the, the denial of service attacks and stuff. That um, like now there's a, a series of attacks that they've reported that uh, that CXF is the only one now that that can block all of them um, as as that's on the Java side. For 3.0, uh, Comb uh, has done a ton of work on a new security WS security implementation uh, that is stacks-based rather than DOM-based. The old WSS for J implementation is DOM-based. You take the entire SOAP message, you build a DOM, uh, or like Access 2, they built an Axiom. Basically, bring the whole thing as much as possible into memory, and then do some traversals on that to do whatever they need to do from a security standpoint. Uh, for 3.0, we actually got a contribution from, from Mark Geiger uh, with a stacks-based implementation. We've, uh, Comb and Mark have been doing a phenomenal amount of work uh, updating it to get it to meet all the standards that we have in CXF and get as many of the CXF tests to pass. Uh, the big thing about it is, is that it, the, because it's stacks-based, it, the memory footprint is a lot lower. If you saw Comb's talks yesterday, uh, with the DOM based, as the message got bigger, the memory usage it was almost like it was basically linear, straight, straight up. Whereas with the stacks based, there, it was like a flat line right across. No matter what the size of the message you got, you got coming in, we could process it with a flat amount of memory. Uh, which, in an ESB where you may, you may have a thousand messages coming in at once, uh, sucking up all the memory for each of those messages could be, I don't want to say a pure denial of service type thing. It's just that you're going you're gonna to have performance problems because memory is going to be higher. Your garbage collections are going to be more of an impact. Uh, we're hoping to get higher performance out of it, too. We're not there yet. We have a lot of profiling to do and some tuning and stuff like that. But that's kind of a, a, a goal. Um, as well as by doing streaming, we can plug in uh, attachment support a little bit better. This is an ongoing project as well. So again, a lot of this stuff is, is we have a new base in place on the new implementation. Uh, the additional, the functionality that we had in 2.7 is pretty much there with the new implementation, uh, but it provides us a base to provide additional fu functionality that we couldn't do before on, with the previous implementation. So, um, I'm going to talk a little bit some of the other three. I know mean, those were kind of the major things that we've done: the JXRS 2.0 and the deployment thing, and the security. There's a bunch of other stuff that we've done um, for 3.0 that, that are important. Uh, we have a bunch of WSRM updates, mostly from Dennis, who's sitting back there, too. Uh, <laughs> one of the things, I mean, we've had an implementation of WSRM for a while. It was 1.0 based. It had a bunch of restrictions. It wasn't really heavily used. Uh, one of the things Dennis has done is partially because he's got paying customers that are paying him to, to do this, uh, is to update it to the full 1.1 spec, get some better testing with .NET and other implementations. Uh, make sure that the sequences get terminated when you're done with your client. And, and th th like with the old uh, CXF, trying to terminate a sequence involved like digging into the uh, the client object model to find a particular C uh, RM thing, and it was just kind of like nobody did it because it was just too much of a pain in the butt. Whereas now it's it's very simple to do, and uh, we have the JMX management. So so there's a bunch of RM updates that have been uh, that are in there for 3.0. The bottom bullet point isn't there yet, um, but with the new stuff that we have, the new architecture that he's kind of worked on, it's getting a lot closer. Um, so hopefully, probably not for, maybe not for 3.0, but maybe 3.0.3 or some time point in the future, things like this will start working better together. Uh, a little thing, uh, it's kind of a hidden thing, is uh, CXF's code generator generates by default Jax Wiz compliant things. Which is great. Uh, it's a standard. I, I'm not going to complain too much about the JAXWIS standard. The, one of the problems is because it's JAXWIS standard, we can't introduce things uh, that are CXS, CXF specific uh, into it. So we actually added a quick uh, CXF front end, which is very, very similar to the JAXWIS front end, except for it's got additional constructors. So, like for the CXF bus instance, we actually can add a constructor that lets you pass in the bus instance. So, for, for configuring the clients, it can become, become a lot easier. Uh, we can pass, there, there's a few other things that you can pass in, uh, like properties and stuff. It just it gives us a little bit of flexibility to, to say, uh, I know I'm going to use CXF. Oh, yeah, the other big thing about JaxWiz is okay, you create a JaxWiz client, you're not guaranteed to get a CXF 
behind the, on the sky. Like a lot of our support problems, you used to take a look at the stack trace and it's like, okay, you're using the JAXWIS implementation that's in the JDK. You're not using CXF. Make sure CXF's on the class path. Whereas with our own generated stuff, because it's actually got references to CXF classes, you kind of know in order to even run this thing, you've got to have CXF there. And so there, there's, uh, by default, we'll probably still be, we'll, we'll still be generating the, the, the JAXWIS stuff, but there is a spe CXF specific front end that can provide a few, just a little bit easier configuration and stuff. Uh, we have some new transports. Uh, we have a Netty-based HTTP, uh, so that brings our, our HTTP stuff up to three. So we actually, like, we have the, the Jetty stuff that we have had for on the server side. Um, we have the URL-based client. We have the uh, Apache HTTP components client for, for async stuff. We actually have Netty-based for both server and client. Um, again, depending on what jars you have or you're using, you, that may be more appropriate than Jetty. Um, for, for some people that are using like JBoss or whatever, they have probably already have the netty based stuff on their class path. So for them, it may make sense to, to use that. So it's just, a, it's just an option there. Uh, we have a WebSocket transport that's in process. This is, again, another community contribution, uh, which I think is great. Uh, somebody decided they needed to, to do some REST-based stuff with, with WebSockets. So they spent some time with, with Sergey to, to get this thing kind of flushed out. That's still kind of work in progress. It's only a server-side piece right now. We don't have a client piece for, for calling off, like doing JAXRS clients with WebSockets. Uh, but over time, we'll, we'll, we'll probably get that get there as well. Uh, the other big thing on the transport side is the JMS transports being completely rewritten. Uh, this is the one thing in CXF that still had a hard dependency on Spring. Uh, when CXF started many, many years ago, we used Spring everywhere. Over time, we have slowly made Spring more optional. Um, and you can do a lot of configuration either via Blueprint or via just APIs or anything like that. The one exception that we still had was the JMS transport because it relied on all of the, C the Spring JMS stuff. So that's being rewritten. Uh, no sp Spring won't be required there. So, so all those people that are not Spring fans, are, are, uh, they're all going, yay, we can get these stars out there. But uh, so that's, that's being done. Um, the, the, he's done some simple benchmarks, because this is Christian uh, is doing this. Uh, he's done some benchmarks. It's, it's looking really good from a performance standpoint with the JMS and stuff. So definitely getting there. Um, so a little bit about the roadmap. Uh, we released the Milestone 2 a few weeks, weeks ago. Uh, please test it. Um, uh, we have a migration guide up on our, on our website, uh, which can kind of give you an idea of what is involved, uh, particularly like the APIs that have been deprecated and removed and things like that. Uh, but the only way for us to really know that that migration guide is accurate and has all the information is for people to really try migrating an application um, and figure out, okay, uh, we had uh, JBoss, the JBoss guys started their migration there a couple weeks ago, and, and they hit a few things that weren't on the migration guide, and they're like, is this supposed to do this? I'm like, oh yeah, that's got to be on the migration guide. <laughs> so I, I, there are because we did remove deprecated APIs and we did change some package structures a little bit. There, there, it isn't a drop in. Uh, if you're using just pure Jax with APIs, it is a drop in replacement. Um, but if you're using any of CXS specific APIs, uh, then there is a bit of a migration. Uh, I'll be completely honest. That's why it's a 3.0 and not a 2.8. Um, but for the most part. Uh, I just want to encourage people to give it a try uh, because we, we, the only way we're going to find out is find issues and, and be able to make sure we have an accurate migration guide is for people to try it. Uh, we're hoping by the end of this month to have 3.0 out. Um, so like I said, please test. <laughs> if we're to get it out by the end of the month, I, want, I would like to have as much confidence in it as possible. Um, as I said, we, as we're going to continue the 2.7 patch releases like we've been doing, uh, we'll probably do another one more 2.6 release shortly. I mean, there's, there's one being voted on now, but we'll probably do one more and we'll call that the end of that line uh, now that 3.0 is, is out. Um, so that's, that's kind of a roadmap. Uh, again, uh, please test. <laughs> please test. I can't <laughs> emphasize that enough. Um, obviously, uh, if you have any questions or you want more information, uh, the CXF website is there. If you go to slash docs slash migration dash guide.html, uh, is where the migration guides are. Um, uh, please take a look at the, the, the migration guide for CXF is pretty long right now, but that, that just reflects the amount of work that has gone into it. Uh, one of the things that we, in the past, like, okay, when did, you, when did we decide to go from 2.6 to 2.7? It's when the 2.7 migration guide got beyond one page. So that, that was kind of like one of those deciding factors is like, okay, this is getting kind of long, let's do a release. 
Um, and 3.0 has been in the works for, for quite a while, so, so it is a, a relatively long migration guide. Um, Obviously, if you have questions, there's a users list. Uh, there's also the dev at CXF for uh, the Apache people. I, I definitely encourage people to, to ask questions, uh, propose ideas, uh, submit patches. Submit patches. That's great. Uh, if you can submit patches, that's always a wonderful thing. Um, and if you, can't, if you have a problem and you can't submit a patch because you can't figure it out, a test case is almost as good. Uh, I, I know I spend almost as much time writing tests like trying to reproduce tests and uh, or like create test cases for problems than I do actually fixing them. Uh, and a lot of times, the bug fixing a bug is like two or three lines of code if I can reproduce it. Uh, and that's so one of the things I always try to encourage people is if, if you can't at least like if you don't have the skill set or don't have the time or whatever to actually submit a patch, at least provide a, us a usable test case. So that that's important, uh, particularly with with 3.0 uh, as we're kind of moving forward. Um, my contact information down there, but again, I don't encourage you to use that unless you have specific, um, like if you have a, comp a, a test case that is, has some confidential information that they don't want on the dev list or whatever. I'm sometimes okay if you send it to, to me directly, uh, but for the most part, I encourage people to use the, the public stuff. Uh, it, I, 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 I like to say I scale fairly well, but I'm not infinite. Um, so by getting it out on the dev list or, or on the user list, uh, that gives other opportunities for, for other people. I mean, the CXF team has been wonderful. I mean, uh, you have, like I said, we have Sergey and, and uh, doing a lot of REST stuff. We have Calm with all the security. And uh, Andre, he was actually one of the drivers for the XKMS stuff. Uh, so uh, again, if if you have any, any problems, uh, if you send a note to the dev list, one of the things that I always like to like is if I don't have to answer it because one of the other guys did, that's great. Um, so any other, any questions or comments? Um, yeah. Calm. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for the most part, like any service is going to be stateless, like completely stateless. So, so whatever information comes in on that message is what it's going to be used to apply towards that. So, uh, if the message comes in with a particular, if it's using the Kerberos profile and it's coming in as a SOAP header or, or something, uh, we'll be using that. Uh, obviously, there's other ways of getting that Kerberos information in there, whether it be like cert certificates on the HTTPS connection or whatever. Um, those. That information is there, and there, there is a security context that goes with every message when it goes through, where you can call back and say, "Give me the principal for this context uh, or this exchange," uh, and how that principal gets populated. There's a variety of ways. I mean, the transport level is one way of, of populating that. So for things like HTTPS, you're going to get that populated from from Jetty uh, or Tomcat or, or whatever you're using. For for something like WS Security, you're, the WSS4J Runtime will we'll populate that. Uh, there's like JMS. If it's coming in from JMS, there are the optional uh, like client principles that can kind of come in with the JMS, and the JMS transport can populate that stuff as well. So, so again, that there is a context there. That said, one of the problems with that context is there's a, only a single like get principal call. But what happens if you have a uh, a like SAML token because one thing, one thing, the the principle in there could be like a, a from a SAML thing as well. But what if that's coming in over HTTPS with a different set of things? And and so there, there is some sort of if you do need to dig in further as far as okay, you need the whole set of, of principles, then you have to probably dig a little bit further into the CXF stuff. Um, whereas for the simple, I have a single principle for this message. It, it's very easy. Do you want to answer that question? No, that's yours. <laughs>
I think most of our customers right now are, are just using CXF clients and stuff, so it, it's it's very easy. It's not designed because like X, the XKMS spec, and it's a spec, it's designed to, I mean, it, it, is, it is just SOAP over. Yeah, I mean, it is a W3C spec, so I mean, in theory there should, there should be other implementations. And that said, just just like .NET, I mean, if if it, I mean the the DWS RM stuff is, is if you're getting into an engagement with a company that this, that this interests interests them, uh, and you find any inter interoperability problems or whatever, I mean, let us know. I mean, we're, we're definitely. I mean, our goal is to make it interop with just about anything. Um, I mean, we've tried. I mean, these specs uh, for anybody that's actually read through any of the W3C specs, um, I don't recommend it. Um, but they're, I want to, they're okay specs, but there are certain areas that I want to say are uh, open to interpretation um, <laughs> that have caused all kinds of interoperability problems. And, and one of the things, one of our goals, obviously, with CXF is to, to make sure that we, we can interoperate. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about, like, the, the WS security with the MTOM attachments. Uh, this is another example where, I, in theory, you should be able to do WS security with MTOM attachments, but we have the spec is so vague on what that's supposed to look like, as from like an actual SOAP message on the wire type thing, uh, that there's like three or four different ways of interpreting what that means. Um, so one of the things that that, that Calm was trying to get and, and working with Dennis to, to try and get it is okay, what does like .NET do in this specific case, so that we can at least interop with them. So so rather than going off and doing our own thing, we're trying to do a little bit of research to figure out uh, what can we do to a work. Um, to implement the feature, and B, to, to make sure that what we implement actually is has at least some vague uh, co coherency with the another implementation. So our, our, our ideas kind of mesh a little bit better. So, so th again, the XMS is the same way. It is, please test. <laughs> Let us know. Any other questions or, or comments or suggestions for CXF of, of what we're missing? <laughs> Not great. Uh, like I said, please uh, grab the latest milestone and test out, or even better yet, compile the, tr uh, the master. Oh, yeah, the other big news. We switched to Git. Yay! <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was uh, a recent thing just a few weeks ago. The, the community did decide to, to flip from Subversion over to, to Git. Um, so the releases that we're being voted on right now, the 2.7.11, uh, 2.6.14, are our very first releases from our, our Git repo. So, uh, and with the, with the new Apache, infra I don't know if you guys caught the, the presentation run, the infrastructure group about how uh, Git at Apache now has a nice straight path all the way to GitHub. I mean, if you guys want to contribute, you actually can fork the project in Git, GitHub, submit pull requests. I mean, we're, we're happy to take things that way that, uh, as well. So if, if you're a GitHub person, fork away. So. Uh, yeah. It, it went really, I was surprised with how quick it, it went. I mean, it was one of those things where I, I, there was a lot of, I did a lot of work ahead of time to, to 
run, because one of the things that we didn't want to do was just take the subversion repository as it was and dump it into, because uh, the way we do, were doing merges and subversion invo involved a lot of like empty commits, and, and because the, the subversion ID number ended up being in the commit messages and stuff, that, that just wouldn't make any sense once we moved it to, to Git. So we, we did go through and kind of, I want to say, rewrite the 2.7 branch each commit uh, individually uh, to make sure that that branch looked clean from a Git standpoint. So that took a little bit of time. We did, it was optional, but it was one of the things I think it was worthwhile because you can kind of look back at that now and say, this makes sense, and you can kind of see where things went and stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, once we got the, the Git repo that we wanted, um, oh, the other thing that we did was because CXF has been, has history all the way back to uh, incubator times uh, when we were based on Ant. Uh, so this is like old time. Like we had uh, Tomcats checked in there, like full installs of Tomcat, full installs of the Jack was referenced. I mean, we had uh, 80 some megabytes worth of jars in the way old, old history that made our Git repo bigger. So one of the things that we wanted to do was truncate it at the point where we flipped to 100% to Maven. Um, so that's where our history, our GitHub history starts at that point. It doesn't have all the incubator history, um, but we figured that was so long ago that anything from that time frame is probably irrelevant or been rewritten six times since then anyway, um, that it was an irrelevant. So we, we did truncate that as well, just because it, it cut our, our Git repo down from 160 meg down to about 48, um, so which we figured was important enough to, to spend the time to do that. But again, once we got the Git repo that we wanted, I mean, infrastructure was great. I mean, it, I filed a report, and I think within an hour they had it, everything flipped over um, and told us to test it before they went like live live with it. And uh, we tested it for a couple of hours, let everything look good. And, and again, I, I said, hey, it's, it's good. And I think within 15 minutes they had everything completely live. And an hour later, GitHub came up. And I, it was just about as smooth as possible as I could have imagined it being. So, so any of your other projects that are thinking about it, I mean, Obviously, if you're a subversion junkie or whatever, then, then fine. But if you are a Git thing, don't be scared of it. The inf Apache Infrastructure Group has done a good job with it, uh, getting things set up. And like I said, fork it. You can do a pull request. They, they, they go right to our uh, dev list. Uh, we can do pulls. We can do uh, right from the, the pull requests and things. It, it works really well. So, Any other questions or comments? Well, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I can definitely test things away. <laughs> Thanks.